Hi, beautiful people. How are ya? I hope you're having a great day. this on Friday, the same day that I released episode one of the root causes of fibromyalgia that premiered this morning at 9 a.m. So far, the video is doing very well. I am thrilled with that, but I'm trying to figure out why it seems that when I do a premiere, and I've done several Unless my family is logged on and chatting in the chat box, nobody else is chatting but me. Now, I know you're all not shy, so that wouldn't be the reason. So what exactly is the reason that prevents you from chatting during a premiere? A premiere is like a live video, but I'm not live. It's a pre-recorded video that a YouTuber puts out so that we can chat amongst each other. So if you could tell me, you know, why it is you think people are not chatting during the live. And now, granted, there are very few of us on, so that could be the problem. Maybe I'm putting the premiere out at the wrong time on a wrong day. I'm just trying to figure it all out. It's how my brain works. Maybe you all don't like premieres. Maybe you don't want to chat, and that's fine too. I do hope you will communicate about the videos that I do put out in the discussion below. But is there a better time or a better day for me to do this? I, I look at the analytics, and I chose... Friday at 9 a.m. because it says that a lot of you are on at that time, but it's okay. This is just how my brain works. I just would really like to understand. Since I was in college, I've been researching what scientists believe are the root causes of fibromyalgia. I say causes because I do believe that there's more than one root cause. For that reason, it has been difficult for researchers to determine what the root cause of fibromyalgia is, its etiology. But I do wonder if part of the problem is, just like in medicine, there are many areas of study and researchers have their specific narrow field for the most part. And so, as I said in the last video, I do hope that they'll come together more like-minded researchers from their various specific fields and bring it all together and help us figure out the mystery of fibromyalgia. As a psychologist, this is exciting work for me to dig into all the potential reasons a disease comes into being. But as I've said, it isn't as easy as it seems because we're human and we experience a multitude of unique things. Not one of us have experienced the same thing, right? But we do understand fibromyalgia pain and fatigue. We understand our sleep issues, our stiff muscles, and our lower back pain perhaps memory problems, stress or anxiety, depression, vision issues. Fibromyalgia is a great mimic of other diseases, but we support one another as we continue to learn. Today, we're going to talk about another root cause of fibromyalgia. Various abnormalities indicate 
that multiple factors and mechanisms are involved in the pathogenesis of fibro, meaning the process that fibro goes through to become a disease and how it develops. And yet the etiology of fibro or the cause is unknown. But these are the ones that have been discovered so far by science. Abnormal pain processing, dorsal root ganglia, neuronal hyperexcitability, oxidative stress, mitochondrial dysfunction, inflammation, neuroinflammation, neurogenic inflammation, autonomic dysfunction, small fiber neuropathy, and stressful life events. Today is episode two on dorsal root ganglia. Here we go. Glial cells are neuronal cells that support and protect nerve cells in the brain and spinal cord. They help nerve cells stay in place and help them function properly. They protect our brain from injury and disease. We need them to function properly because they also help maintain homeostasis, the process that maintains a stable internal environment in our body in response to external stimuli. Glial cells form myelin, a fatty substance that insulates axons and allows electrical messages to travel faster from neuron to neuron. Glial cells also provide an immune response by engulfing and destroying toxic chemicals in the brain and spinal cord. They're so important the ability to patrol for damaged and atypical cells and deal with them is called phagocytosis. We need these glial cells to work at their optimal performance. A type of glial cell called ependymal cells line the brain's ventricles and spinal cord. These cells produce cerebrospinal fluid and secrete factors that maintain cerebrospinal fluid homeostasis. Our glial cells wrap themselves around our dorsal root ganglia, found outside the spinal cord. So the dorsal root ganglia isn't exactly right within the central nervous system, it's just outside it. Glial cells protect the dorsal root ganglia. It's believed that the dorsal root ganglia may be the fibromyalgia neural hub where different stressors can be transformed into neuropathic pain. The dorsal root ganglion are a bundle of nerves in the spine that include sensory neurons. While the glial cells surrounding the dorsal root ganglia outside the spinal cord, become hyperactive. The activity of glial cells inside the spinal cord remain the same, normal. So a chronic pain state is born without the activity of the central nervous system involvement. This is all quite different from the central sensitivity syndrome we're told that fibro is, and the new term of nosoplastic pain that explains central sensitization, as we learned in episode one. In a 2021 study, researchers focused on the dorsal root ganglia as a potential fibromyalgia main pain source. Pairs of dorsal root ganglia lie along the spine Dorsal root ganglia houses the pain-transmitting small nerve fiber nuclei. Each individual nucleus is tightly enveloped by metabolically active glial cells. There are multiple inflammatory pronociceptive molecules, including ion channels, neuropeptides, lymphocytes, and macrophages found in the dorsal root ganglia. 
the dorsal root ganglia neurons generate pain signals and sequester specific antibodies. It's very interesting. So this alternative hypothesis to the view of fibromyalgia as a central pain condition is as a stress-related dysautonomia with neuropathic pain features. Dorsal root ganglia may be the key autonomic nociceptive short circuit sites. And in this 2022 study, researchers stated, accumulating research suggests an alternate explanation, just like I stated, fibromyalgia can be conceptualized as a neuropathic pain syndrome and the dorsal root ganglia, not the brain, as the primary fibromyalgia pain source. So what do you think about that? Is it possible that this is the answer? This is the one root cause? Is it possible that we have a central nervous system problem and a dorsal root ganglia problem outside the spinal cord? I think it, it could be. I don't know. In 2021, researchers in that famous mouse study injected mice with antibodies from people with fibromyalgia and observed the development of fibromyalgia-like symptoms. Basically, they developed sensitivities to cold and pressure, had decreased movement, and reduced grip strength. Mm. Miraculously, the symptoms went away after a few weeks when the mice's bodies cleared the antibodies. Researchers suggest that antibodies from people with fibro are a major contributor to the symptoms of fibro. The antibodies bind to cells in the dorsal root ganglion. So this suggests that the antibodies interact with the nervous system to promote painful symptoms. Perhaps therapies that reduce the patient's IgG teeters, a type of antibody, may be an effective treatment for fibro. And if that's the case, fibro could be considered autoimmune. A lot to think about. So I hope you learned something. I send you gentle hugs and support. Love you.